Hi, Heather here from Creative Kiwi. Please join me in watching this video which shows how to make our large applique book. This is another design in our large applique series which shows you how you can use your smaller hoops to make larger designs with all the joining completed completely in the hoop. This is what I would call a stash buster design. Um, just a really great design to have in your stash that you can pull out whenever you want. We've made the base, we've made the, the book as such, but you can add whatever you like to it and use it for just so many things. Um, you could do really cute, add your own designs to make a cute birth announcement, um, happy 50th anniversary. Uh, as I've done there with that book I've made for um, my daughter, I've just put a nice inspiration in there for her. Now, that design, um, when writing the story of your life, does come with the set. We've also included the reading pillow saying that's showing on um, Dorena's gorgeous cushion there. It's got the giraffe and the read me a story text. Or, as we did for the sample on the right, um, I just used Jamie's wall hanging for this one, but you could use the completed um, book to add just to a cushion, because it does make a really pretty cushion with the tassel hanging at the side. And that way you put whatever um, wording you would like on it. As I always say, I really can't wait to see what you do with this design, because you come up with, with some really amazing stuff. Anyway, let's get on to it. So I'm just showing here, basically for the book you just need um, two contrasting bits of fabric. You could do it in one, it really would not make any difference. But what we've got there is the plain fabric for the book and then we've got a contrast edge. Now for the wall hanging I actually used, um, it's called Matilda's Bag Batting. It's just like a heavy felt and that was just to make the wall hanging a bit more stable. Um, we've got our batting which is just about a quarter inch thick and obviously for the wall hanging I used um, a tassel and just a hanging hanging tab. Now this video just shows the techniques that we use to actually make this design. All the details are actually included in the step-by-step -step instructions that you need to, that comes with the design file and you should read beforehand. So if you um, were going to actually put your design onto a cushion or something else you probably will not need to use the backing fabric. What you will need to do is to use the water soluble um, stabilizer, the fabric type that I've just shown there. This is so you can remove all traces of the stabilizer at the end. You just use water to wash it away. So as you can see there, I've got the two layers that I'm hooping in my hoop, and I also use the pinning method, which just ensures that there is no movement in the hoop. I just talk, thought I'd talk about the backing again. Uh, so the design isn't reversible. You can see there I've got a picture of the um, wall hanging, front and back, and you can see the embroidery on the back. Um, mainly I decided that you would either be attaching this design to a reading pillow or a, a project of some sort, or the back would be up against the wall. So um, with the backing, I've, I've shown in the video how to, when to attach your backing, just so that you do know if you're going to make it standalone. But for that, the backing really is just to strengthen the actual design. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get on to making the large applique box. You've hooped your stabiliser. You take it off to, to the machine, put your hoop into the machine, and you're going to stitch the first outline, which is just the outline of the left side of the book. Now what we're doing here is I'm adding my backing fabric because I was making it a wall hanging. Now I'm just floating it under the hoop. So you have to be quite quick to see it. But if you see here, I just float it completely under the hoop. And the main reason being there is nothing on the front so you can actually see that your backing fabric covers the complete outline. Next we're placing our pallet on the front of the hoop. And once again, we're just going to stitch the next colour, which stitches that down and attaches the pallet. Now you can just see on the side there, on the left-hand side, it's just that small, um, what I'm calling the edge of the book. That's where you can have um, a separate fabric, which I did, or you could just do it on the one fabric. It really wouldn't make a difference. Now I show there that there's my backing attached. So using some sharp scissors, we're just going to cut away the excess pallet on the front of the hoop. This just makes it easier for um, removing bulk in the seams, basically. And a lot of my customers prefer to have this added step of cutting the pallet first, then putting your fabric, then recutting again. 
Now I'll just show here, if you hadn't floated your backing but you did want a backing, you could tape it in place now and just put that back in the hoop. It's just an option. Either way, what we're going to do on the front of the hoop is add our um, page fabric. Now that's to cover the whole entire guideline and as you can see you can tape it in place. We take our hoop back to the machine and we stitch the next outline which is the actual complete book so if you did just want to do this really quickly just use the one fabric and you could just have um, contrasting uh, thread. But if you do want the contrast which I've shown in, in the video um, you can see it's just that left edge, the very little bit there. So we're putting our contrast fabric However, you could take that in place. But that outline's just going to stitch that little left hand side. So if you were just doing one fabric, skip that stitch. Right, now we're going to remove it all from the hoop. Whether you have backing or not, um, if you do have backing fabric, then yes, please at this point uh, cut away all the excess. cutting away that side fabric so obviously you can um, add that to your um, scrap basket and use it reuse the fabric and there we go just using um, scissors to cut away all the excess on the front of the hoop Now that's it really, you've just um, back into the machine to finish off the embroidery. So the first stitch is just a zigzag stitch just to neaten that raw edge and just to ensure there's no movement when you do add your design. And what I've done is I'm just going to show you a summary of, of the stitching. So the first thing is a quilting stitch which um, is just a stipple on the front of the, the book. You can choose not to have that if you prefer. And the rest of it is just basically going through, um, obviously adding adding your design. Uh, we've got the second stitch on the edges. And then I'm just showing you, I've just got some photos there basically which shows the book as it is blank. So that's where at the left side you could add your own writing. Or on the right hand side there I've just added my um, saying for Jamie's wall hanging. All the colouring and the details are actually included in the instructions. I just didn't think you wanted to watch it all stitch out. So you've basically completed the left side of the book and the next step to do is just to remove all the excess stabiliser around the edges. So you can see here I cut quite close to the second stitch edges. It's just to make it easier for when you do remove the um, stabiliser on the edges. Now on those raw edges there you can cut a little bit closer. Uh, that's the bit where you're going to join so just neaten that up at that point. And there you go, side one is finished. So the second side is made exactly the same way. You um, hoop your water soluble stabiliser and you stitch the outline. I'm just going to show next if you did want to add a tassel um, or a hanging tab, you do it at that point. You can see the centre line there for the tassel, that's at the bottom. And you just take that in place just outside of that stitch line. And it's just the same with the hanging tab, if you just want it in the centre, just pin it right in that corner. Next we add the batting, the same as before, and you can take that in place if you like. And I think yeah, on this one I show where I put the backing, I tape it in place on the back at this point rather than floating. Either or, personal preference. Now we take that back to the hoop and just as before we do the 
second stitch line which is just going to attach um, the hanging tabs obviously if you're using them or just the pallet. Again, we're just going to cut away that excess stay, uh, sorry, the excess pallet on the front of the hoop. If you know my large applique, they all follow the same sort of steps. If you're new to us, um, obviously, I hope this video um, helps you. Otherwise, you can watch me, um, some of our other videos, and they all go through the same steps. There we go. We're attaching the page fabric. And again, it's just stitching down and giving you that second guideline if you need it to add your contrast fabric, which we're doing there. We take the hoop away from the machine and if you've got backing fabric, cut it away on the back of the hoop. If not, just cut away the excess fabric on the front of the hoop, exactly the same as before. Now we're just going to put that back into the machine and exactly as before, it's just going to do the initial uh, zigzag of that raw edge just so there's no movement. The next step is the joining. So sometimes I do it at the machine but I'm showing you how to do it properly here. So take the hoop from the machine and you've got your matching stitch line upon stitch line. So there is a slight overlap. You'll see it as I say, you can see the stitch line there. Now you can tape this in place. You can see I'm taking some time there just to get it just in the right spot. Now I don't like stitching over the tape, so I ta as tape it down sort of on the edges. Um, it's personal preference. Once you've got it taped and you're quite happy with the placement, you can take that back to the machine. Now the next step, if you can, slow your machine down. Um, so it's personal preference. I'm the sort of, I, I start it and then I stop it and start it and stop it when I, to make sure that it's in place. But you can see there I've just got it, just the zigzag, just stitching and joining the two designs together. You can see there I've stopped it just to get rid of that tape. And that's it. You're just going to do the zigzag stitch which joins the design. It's not so easy to see on the video. And there you go. You can see on the left hand side I've made sure that the zigzag is caught both sides of, of the design. And after that, it's just straight out doing the stitching again, which is just stippling your page detail and then just your actual design. Easy peasy. So that's it done. So all we need to do now is just, um, as before, just going to cut away the excess stabiliser, making sure we don't cut off the tassels, which I'm sure, like many of you, I've done before. So again, it's just cutting kind of close to those um, edges, just so that you've got less, less stabiliser to remove at the end. So being careful of um, your tassels.
Now, because this is a wall hanging, um, I, there, there is no need for me to completely remove the stabiliser. So what I'm going to do is use um, hot water and um, a Q-tip and just do the edges. Now I use, I must admit, fairly hot water for this uh, and that just dissolves away that um, stabiliser. You know, if you were, um, I don't know, going to put it somewhere where the actual design itself could get wet, you could put this whole design in the washing machine and remove absolutely all traces of stabiliser. But as I say, wall hanging, it's unlikely to get wet. And that is it. So I hope you enjoy using the design. As I say, it's like a lot of our designs where we, we give you the base and then basically you guys can add whatever you like. Now, if you don't have um, machine embroidery software to add wording or you're not able to do it on your machine, you could still make this book and just um, in your own handwriting write a lovely message. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Uh, make sure that you do join our Facebook group and send us your pictures so that we can see what you make. I love seeing how creative you are. Thank you. Bye.